Got a secret, can you keep it? Swear this one you'll save Better lock it in your pocket Taking this one to the grave If I show you, then I know you won't tell what I said Cause two can keep a secret if one of them is dead This week on the TV and Film Review Podcast We have Editor-in-Chief David McGregor Hello And News Editor Liam Kearney Hello and of course, myself, film editor Stuart Scott. This week we'll be talking about some of the shows we've been watching throughout the week, some latest news stories, and a cinema-based topic towards the end. So, any of you guys want to start on the what you've been watching this week? On you go, Liam. You do the honours. Oh, I'll go first, shall I? Okay, that's fine. Uh, right, this week I've been watching... Uh, I don't know if you guys have been watching The Blacklist, James Spader. Uh, the FBI most no, wanted guy. I think I, um, I started watching. Um, I started watching it, and I think I gave up. Um, is it any good? I think it's yeah, it's been good. I think it's quite a procedural thing. So obviously, every week it's a different case kind of thing, yeah. which I'm finding a bit tiresome. Well, I slowly like kind of find procedures a bit boring, but I'm quite. They've got like an overarching thing, kind of an ongoing story about how he knows the. Yeah, well, yeah, is your dad and. I'm, I'm, assume, I'm assuming he is her dad. Well, yeah, you don't know. It's I'm pretty sure he is, but yeah, I remember. I remember, I remember thinking that from the pilot episode. You know, it was pretty. Thinking it was pretty clear cut. Yeah. Well, in the latest episode, there was some mention about what happened to his family, so I don't know whether that's going to lead on to something. But it's quite good. It's it's not too bad. I just I prefer more like the overarch kind of the ongoing story rather than just the kind of case of the week stuff. I get finding that a bit. Uh, tiresome. Uh, Look in as well, the new HBO comedy. We obviously, talked about a lot of sitcoms last week. We didn't mention that one. Yeah, it's meant know. to be. It's meant to be quite good. That. Um, yeah, it's, it is. I don't. A lot of the TV kind of critics over in America before it came out were saying, "Oh, you know, it's amazing. It's really, really good. You know, everyone should watch it." And I think it's all right. I don't think it's personally. Don't feel it's near kind of the hype that it's been given by TV critics. But then. There's quite a lot of shows like that. Like, I, I felt very much the same way with uh, Girls. I remember yeah. hearing so much positive stuff about Girls um, and how it was, you know, this great, great show. And I I think I watched the full first season and I just didn't get the hype. And I don't know if it's a sort of different type of comedy. You know, the US ones, um, yeah. you know, that aren't sitcoms. And perhaps I just... You know, it just didn't click for me, but I, I think I gave up on Girls after season one. It just wasn't something I could get into. Yeah, I think Lucas meant to be, I, I think I've only seen a couple of episodes of Girls. I think Lucas meant to be quite similar. It's not like it's laugh out loud funny. I think it's, you know, it's more like, you know, things happen and, you know, people kind of see funny things. It's more funny lines rather than kind of laugh out funny, which is, I don't know, I suppose that works for some people. So yeah, I think it's all right, but yeah, I think it's kind of similar to that. I don't I don't think I'm quite getting it yet, but I'm going to stick with it because, you know, people saying it's, it's good. Who's like, starring in it? It's um Jonathan Groff. Oh, from was, Glee. Ah, yeah, yeah that's why I wanted to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Russell Tovey's in it. He's in it from, I think, this week's episode. Who was in Doctor Who? He's a Br- British, British actor with the quite large yeah. ears. Um, I don't know who the other two... Jonathan Groff's the only name I know. I don't know anyone else, the other two main guys. But to be honest, Jonathan Groff's the only good thing in it. So who was he? Was he in Glee? Was he one of the Warblers? Was that him? Uh, no, he was the guy. He was the guy that Rachel got within the first. Season. Yeah, yeah, I remember he was like a like a big kind of star for them. Oh, right. Jesse, something or other. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was well good in Glee. Does he sing in looking? No, well, he's not yet. Uh, anyway, not yet. But you know, play is, is it the type of show where you you might expect him to break out in song? Yeah, I could see that. I could see him breaking out into song. Oh, I'm they'll definitely maybe, watching it then. Maybe he's a musical <laughs> number. A lot of shows <laughs> these days have musical episodes, don't they? Yeah. It seems to be the end thing. I quite like them. Anyway. Yeah. Well, they work. Apart from like the Grey's Anatomy one was pretty shoddy, but I mean, they work well, they work well. Uh, the other thing I've been watching is <laughs> I'm probably the way the totally wrong demographic and you'll probably take the piss out of me for me but a lot of the ABC family shows like Pretty Little Liars and The Fosters and that I've been watching quite a lot of them I'm way too old and I'm a man so I'm definitely not the target demographic that I'm looking <laughs> for but I do like watching them they're very good and I recommend Pretty Little Liars to you guys to yeah I, I, I can't say that I watch any of them myself I know my girlfriend watches Pretty Little Liars is that the one that's got a really creepy theme tune? 
Yeah, yeah. That, oh, should, be our, that should be our theme tune for the podcast. Well. Oh no, it's it's, oh, it's it, quite creepy. It, Are you just creepy. determined to pick a theme tune every week that I yes. test? Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, that is my plan. But, um, but yeah, they're all good. Pretty Little Liars is starting to struggle. I think it's are we now four seasons in, and it's just getting a bit. They really need to decide when they're going to end it because they're now just having storylines where a parrot's got a secret and all this. It's just getting a bit ridiculous. Oh god. But, it's still a good guilty pleasure. And it's a show that's House... full of pretty people, though, isn't it? Well, it is, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no absolutely not. Shows with, shows with pretty people. It's good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it takes everything. It's got pretty boys, pretty girls. I mean, everyone's pretty much taken care of, so, you know, can't complain. And uh, House of Cards, we talk, kind of mentioned that a little bit last week. That starts next week. So I've just been watching season one in preparation for season two. How are you finding it? It's good. It's good. I really, I really, really like it. I think um, Orange is the New Black is a better Netflix show. That's probably probably was my favourite new show of last of 2013. That um, was amazing. Um, so House of Cards, but I think House of Cards have probably got more kind of attention to begin with, just because it was Kevin Spacey and all that. But it's good. I think. Um, yeah, I, I I find a bit kind of. I don't know, sorry, David, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say, thought. with uh, House of Cards, I, I did enjoy it. I thought it was pretty good. And uh, it was a show that I... Because I'm not really usually into political um, storylines as such. I'd, I've never really been a huge fan on them. Um, and, uh, you know, so I was a bit kind of cagey going in. But I, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed the girl. I forget her name. Um, you know the main girl that stars in it? Uh, the, uh... Is it the, the journalist? Yeah, the um, journalist girl. Kate, Kate Mara, Katie Mara. Something That's like it. That. That's a fair one. Um, I, yeah, I think she's pretty good. In, in no, Kevin Spacey, is obviously, yeah. it's obviously fine. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I thought Orange is a New Black certainly for me was the best Netflix show yeah. in terms of best show of 2013. I would plump for Rectify. I don't know if you ever caught yes. that. Yes, I watched Rectify. Yeah, I did a few reviews for it for the website. Then. But yeah. No, that was good, right? If I was good, that must be coming back soon as well. Well, it was. It should have been. It was around this time last year that season one started, but they've um, only just started filming season two, so got oh, to really? wait till the summer for that. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, yeah no, that was good. I liked it. It's fine. I think it's longer this season because the first season was really short. Yeah. yeah that would so. that would be a perfect show for Netflix to pick up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, certainly definitely. in the UK, it's you know doesn't look as if it's going to come on anywhere. No. Oh. No, I don't think so. But yeah, no. Good I think was that not a Sundance channel? It was, yeah. A- yeah. AMC, I think, or were showing reruns of it in the US as well. I thought maybe that's why that's why it's not been picked up by Netflix or anything like that. Maybe they have some Possibly. product they've got coming out on yeah. the Xbox or something like that to show their stuff. I don't know because the returned. I don't know if you guys watched the returned, the French kind of zombie thing. I've not seen it. I, I th- I'm sure I've got all that recorded. I'm sure it's on my yeah. watch list. That was on Sundance in America, and it's now just gone on Netflix this month. So, I don't think there's necessarily a problem with Sundance stuff going on Netflix if that's gone on, but um, mm. or it's going on this month. But yeah, no rectify would be a good thing to to put on because it was quite a. You wanted to keep finding out what's happening. So, yeah. hey, anyway, what have you guys? I'm oh, sorry. No, uh, on you go. Were you just asking what we were. Uh, I was just going to say what you guys have been watching. I'm not actually going to say something else. Yeah, no, I was uh, this week. I I've not caught a lot of TV this week actually. Um, at the start of the week, you know, I, I watched my uh, a lot of my sitcoms weren't on. I I don't know. They, a lot of them took a break. Certainly my Tuesday ones. Yeah, I take it from uh, the Super Bowl. They've been taking a break. I know, like for big things like that, they usually put on. Spec. I think they're now in a, as in actually the, the Winter Olympics. They're now taking a break for a few weeks. I think are they not? Because they don't want to air against that. I think I don't know. You make right, right, yeah. So a lot of my sitcoms uh, weren't on this week. Um, Mom aside, Mom was still still going strong. Um, <laughs> it was a bit of a rubbish episode this week, to be honest. They they tried to introduce a more serious storyline into the sitcom and it didn't really work. And um, the other main two shows I've caught this week. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Black Sails. R. That's my pirate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit more like a farmer, wasn't it? It was a wee bit, yeah. yeah. It was. What's, what's a pirate noise? Do they not go, Arr! Yar! 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 The pirates do! <laughs> yeah. Shiver me timbers. Yeah. Good pirate, guys. Um, so, yeah. I've been watching Black Sails. I've just caught the first episode. I expected to hate it, and I actually pretty enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was a good watch. It was... I mean, the cast in it, I didn't have a clue on any of them. 
Is that is Hugh Laurie not in it? Well, Hugh Laurie was originally meant to be on it, backed out. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Well, that's a big blow for them. Well, it is, although the, the character they've got to play, um, Hugh Laurie's one, which was a captain, they've they've got someone who just looks like Hugh Laurie. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess it's not that big a blow. <laughs> yeah. And it's... Um, he looks sort of like a cross between Hugh Laurie and, you know, from Game of Thrones, Sir Jorah, the guy that hangs about with the Khaleesi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Reminds me of him. Do you know what? that The show's actually full of lookalikes. Speak, there's a, the main character, which is a, a young guy, um, John Silver, who I assume becomes long at some point. Want to ask how? Some kind of Austin Powers device? <laughs> we're, we're keeping this clean this week. <laughs> we're, we're, According to iTunes, we've got to cut out the explicit material, so oh, really? let's keep it clear. Oh, well. <laughs> so, no, no more long John Silver jokes. <laughs> yeah, he looks like the uh, the actor's name, excuse me, but have you watched the Hobbit films? He looks like the good-looking Hobbit, the, not not the good-looking Hobbit, the good-looking dwarf that hooks up with the elf, or they've got the, on the oh, really? love storyline with, yeah. Um, and then they've also got the, the lead female in Black Sails, is looks like Maggie Grace but with a bigger rack, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, f- full of lookalikes. But um, the cast itself is is pretty unknown. I, I remember looking afterwards um, at the filmographies for them all, and none of them have been anything major. A lot of journeyman type actors have been, you know, a lot, a lot of small roles and things. But it it, it was good. It had a good storyline, and I'll be checking in um, next week because it's the nowadays we touched on it briefly last week. I sort of measure a pilot now, and you know, if it's made me watch the next, want to watch the next episode, then it's it's done a good job, because there's so many where I just turn off. And the only other thing uh, of note that I started watching this week is I started to catch up on Rain. Oh yeah. Oh, this was bound to come up, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a fan, Stuno. Uh well, I I haven't really watched it. I've watched like uh, trailers and clips for it, but it just doesn't grab me. Yeah. This. Do you know what? It, it's it's a shame that um, Molly. Uh, for those of you listening, one of our writers who was, who was scheduled to be on the podcast today, she was she's a massive fan of Rain, so it would have been good to hear her views on it. Uh, but as three Scotsmen here, I mean, it, it will frustrate you, certainly at first anyway. Have you watched it, Liam? Yes, I have, yeah. yeah Are you up to date? I haven't, I haven't watched it since it came back after Christmas. So yes. I think last one I watched her in, is it Bash? Oh, what a, why, why is it called Bash? You know, the, they went on the run. They ran away. That's the last one I've seen. Yeah. I, I mean, I've only watched two or three episodes. I'm still way behind. Oh well, that was a spoiler then for you. Nah, Sorry, it's, I don't know who he is. So, but it, it, the thing is, it for me, it was so hard, and it, it still is to um, track who's who because uh, and Stu, this will this will really rile you up. Benedict Cumberbatch in it? <laughs> no, not quite. Um, but. So for you've got the lead actress, right, who plays Mary Queen of Scots. I believe it's Adelaide Adelaide Clements. Is that her name? Adelaide. It's, Ad, it's definitely Adelaide. It's Adelaide something. Yeah. She. So she's Australian, and she's playing a Scots woman who was raised in France, and she's got an English accent. Oh dear. Right. You've got all the. You've got the French king and queen and prince who are all what they all they're all English. Yeah, they are all English. Yeah. And you've got some Americans. All her, all her Scottish ladies' maids are all American or Australian. It, it, but the thing is, nobody changes their accent. They just. Oh my god! <laughs> You're right. That that does rile me up. <laughs> the thing is, I was watching it, but because everyone's everyone's speaking in these different languages, but not the correct ones to the country. It really throws you, certainly at the start, when you're trying to learn the characters. You know, you've got this guy. I think it's the the King of France. Um, you know, so he's speaking in this, you know, strong English accent. You know, so I'm assuming he's some sort of English king or something over there, <laughs> but, but it's not. And I, I don't know how it goes on, Liam. If it gets any better or worse. Um, I think it gets a bit CWS. Get more kind of as kind of the Molly's review when everyone was kind of going on about the the two kind of big relationships. It does get quite. It's all about their kind of love. I think I like the pilot where it was, there's like the kind of supernaturally, like the woman with the bag on her head and all that. I thought that was yeah. pretty good. But that seems to kind of be coming more into it at the end. But yeah, it kind of gets a bit kind of more teen girly as it yeah. goes on. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's not a, when you look past not all bad, that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's, um, it, it, 
and do you know what? It's, it's quite an enjoyable watch. It's quite an easy watch for yeah. forty five minutes. Um, yeah, I but think... I, I would, you, if you get annoyed easily by things like accents and you know realism, then you, you don't want to watch it. And I think like the girl, I can all of our handmaidens or lady maids or whoever they are, yeah. her ladies. I, I can I don't know who any of them are. I, you don't I don't think you really apart from the one that kind of gets with the king. Um, yeah, Caitlin it, Caitlin Stacy was in. Yeah, the she used to be in neighbours. Yeah, yeah. I think she's the only. The rest of them. I mean, you could you could get rid of them and you, it still wouldn't make any difference. Just... One of her ladies' maids, I think, is a girl that was in Narnia. You ever watched? You, have you ever seen Narnia? Ah, yeah, that's what I knew. Mean, I recognise yeah. her from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, I mean, range enjoyable. I'll, I'll probably watch the other episodes, but I'm not in any huge rush to catch up. But it, by all accounts, it's been pretty popular, and it's not been renewed for a second season, I don't think. But I'm sure it's pretty much nailed on. Mm, yeah, maybe. I think it's between that and the Tomorrow People. I think they're going to have to. It's between one or the other, I think it's going to get renewed. Yeah. Not both. Yeah, and, and that's me. That's what I've been watching this week, Stu. All right. So I've not actually watched anything quote unquote new this week. Nothing that's. Uh, had a new episode. I've been watching uh, Jimmy Private School Girl. I don't know if you guys are fans of like, I thought we were keep, I thought we were keeping this clean. What what is that? Private School Girl. Um, did, did you ever watch Summer Heights High or Angry Boys or anything like that? No. No. Can we can, can, can we insert a tumbleweed uh, <laughs> noise, noise there? Um, it, you should watch them. It's the great great shows. This Australian guy. They? Uh, Chris Lilly, his name is, and he basically does a lot of uh, different characters. He plays just about every main character in it. But this is focusing on one of the characters from that show, uh, from Summer Heights High, uh, and it's this really over the top uh, Australian uh, teenager uh, schoolgirl, and uh, it's just it's so so funny. But it's I don't know, it's not for everybody. Um, it's really cringy. You can't laugh out loud at it unless you, unless you're not taking it seriously. Um, it's so bad it's good. But I'm I'm about three episodes into that just now. I don't know. I'm struggling to finish it. It's it's really cringy. I can watch maybe one episode a day or something. But it's yeah, it's a, a hard watch sometimes. You wouldn't recommend it then. Oh no, I would. It's it's really it's good, but it's you're not selling it very well. <laughs> no, you're there's not a lot, watch it. a lot that makes it really weird and really. I don't know. It's hard to describe it. Go go back and watch uh, Angry Boys. Angry Boys is the the entry level one. I think you get it on like BBC or whatever, uh, BBC iPlayer or something. Um, uh, more always in Philadelphia. Absolutely hooked in that show. Spoke about it last week, so I won't go too much into it. But I'm I'm like maybe season four or something. Season four or five. And the, the funniest part of it that everybody tells you about has just happened and I, I laughed for about three minutes just without storm. What what is what is Sunny Philadelphia about? Is that the one with Danny DeVito or It is, yeah. Uh, Danny DeVito and the guy whose name I can't remember who is in Mindy Project just now. Or was in Mindy Project. Spoilers. Um the lawyer guy, Cliff. Alright. Oh, yeah, so those two that are in it. I think he's still in the Mindy Project, isn't he? He may be. I can't remember. I can't remember if he was in the last episode or not. But yeah, it's uh, those two and uh, another three who own a bar in Philadelphia and it's just... It's like a cross between a sketch show, a, a procedural and a, a sketch show and a sitcom. It's, it's good. It's a good laugh. Just a lot of random crap that happens. That's about it. I've got a few things lined up that I've not had a chance to start yet. Uh, I'm going to start watching Vikings um, from the start. Oh, good choice. Good choice. Uh, I remember you and uh, Robbie going on about it. Yeah, I mean, don't don't expect too much. You know, it's it's no Game of Thrones or anything. No, I but but for I think it's their their debut because it came on the the History Channel. Yes, it was their production, um, and I think it was their debut sort of drama show, our drama show, and it was uh, and it was very good. It was pretty watchable, and it was some good characters. I mean, it's it's what it's what you would probably expect. You know, you've got a lot of Vikings, a lot of killing. A lot of boats. Um, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of other Vikings sort of uh, stereotypes here. Helmets. <laughs> big, yeah. big uh, blonde guys with beards. Yeah. Just That's my true. type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Good choice to catch up on. Uh, season two starts next week or a couple of weeks time, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other one that I fancied was uh, Helix. I think was it Taylor that reviewed that. 
No, it was Molly. Molly, it was, right, okay. Um, and I, I read her review a couple of weeks ago and she really sold me on it, so I'm going to give that a go this week as well. Yeah, I've yeah, seen the first two of that. She really sold me on it as well and uh, until I watched it. Oh, God, <laughs> really? Uh, well, you know, again, almost like, um, as I was saying before, with sort of uh, politics dramas... Um, the sci-fi genre is not a huge doesn't appeal to me greatly for TV shows for some reason there's been a whole bunch of them over the last few years that I've, I've started watching and gave up on um, and I really enjoyed the first episode of Helix I, th- I don't know if it was a double pilot or if I just watched them together uh, but I enjoyed the first episode and by the second episode I was uh, bored oh god really uh, you know as I say it's, it's maybe just me maybe not my genre I'll give it a go anyway I like the, I like the idea of it Especially compared to the other kind of sci-fi shows that have been out, like what was the one with the clocks? That sounded off zero hour. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, that 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 was a network thing, wasn't it? That was, was that yeah. ABC? That that just looked awful. I I I watched the trailer of that and thought it looked pretty good from the trailer. Oh god, really? Yeah. <laughs> looked like a really cheesy Indiana Jones. Yeah. And True Detectives uh, was the last one. Um, the Woody Harrelson thing you spoke about last week. Enjoying it? Um, I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. I've got it. I've got it recorded, and uh, I'll probably give it a go tonight, actually, before the Super Bowl comes on. Good effort. Yeah. Speaking of the Super Bowl, it uh, kind of takes us on to our latest news. One that I wanted to speak about was the Super Bowl commercials. A few big movie ones coming out that are going to be shown tonight. Oh, what have we got? Is it Noah? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Is that, oh, is that yeah, a TV yeah. show or a movie? It's a movie, movie yeah. It's a movie. Um, never heard of it. Uh, I see. I seen uh, a kind of mini trailer, like a teaser trailer, um, last week, and looked quite good. Yeah, it's got it's got not bad. Ca- I think Russell Crowe plays uh, the lead role of Noah, and I believe Emma Watson's in it, and Logan Lerman maybe as well. Um, I think is it Logan Lerman? Yeah, I think you might be right. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, you know I think it's all right. I think it's going to be a huge, big budget sort of lots of special effects and things like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it looks like it. Uh, Anthony Hopkins in it as well apparently didn't know that what else Captain America Winter Soldier that's going to be one of the big ones for the summer I think isn't it yeah I'm, I'm yeah. less excited about that I'm not a huge Captain fan do you know what I didn't think it was the worst of the Avengers movies the first one like the kind of broken down ones um, I I didn't like Thor I thought the two Thor movies were a lot worse but yeah. Yeah. I, like, I like the Captain America character, so maybe this one can be a wee bit. Yeah, see, it's a character I don't like. I don't like this sort of, uh, you know, all-American hero type character. It just doesn't do it for me. But he has a shield that's also a boomerang. <laughs> you, you don't get much better than that. Well, you've got Thor, who's got a hammer. He's got a hammer. Exactly. That's also a boomerang. Nah, but Thor, Thor sucks, though. He's just he's just a super good-looking guy that can fly and all that, and... Out of all the um, the films, the Avenger films, I the Thor ones are my favourites. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I, no, I, thought, I thought they were so. No. Uh, have you watched the second one? Yeah, I, I didn't like. It. I thought I'd... the the action scenes were a bit better than what the first ones were, but I didn't think there was enough of it. Do you not even like Loki? Oh yeah, I like the cat. The characters in the Avengers movie. Uh, Avengers Assemble, they were fine. I, ju- I just don't like the individual movies. The, o- the only individual movies I've really enjoyed were the Iron Man ones, and I still haven't seen Iron Man 3 yet, which I've heard is rotten. Uh, yeah, I, do you know, I watched Iron Man 3, I think I gave it maybe a 6 or 7 out of 10, uh, but do you know what, I can't remember anything about it. Very forgettable. Yeah. I, I, I remember enjoying it, but, you know, I, I can't remember anything about it. The reason I, I didn't watch it was because I walked into the, like, the main plot spoiler. And it just kind of ruined it for me. I just had no no drive to go out and see it after that. But I like, obviously, Robert Downey Jr. has got all the best lines and everything. He's the, he's the highest paid, so he gets all the, the attention, all the best banter and everything. Plus, Tony Stark's obviously the best character from the comics and all that as well that fits into that. Uh, and the last one was... Oh, the new Spider-Man movie. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, yeah. Quite looking, quite looking forward to that. Yeah, I've heard a, a few people are. See, a lot of people say the, the first Amazing Spider-Man was the best so far. I didn't fancy well, it because I quite like the first three. 
Uh, it's much, much better than the Tobey Maguire one. It's definitely much better. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll maybe give it a go then. I'll maybe go and buy the DVD or the Blu-ray uh, before this new one comes out and just give them a wee double feature or something. But I know there was a lot of... That, what I'm worried about with this one, they'll maybe try to fit too much into it. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of villains, isn't there? There's not four different villains. Yeah, it's like the, the last Batman film where they had like loads and loads of baddies. It seems like they're just throwing them all in and kind of seeing what happens. But yeah, that's my only concern about it, is they seem to be adding far too many people. Although I'm, I'm not sure any of them will be as good as Bane, will they? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, true. Who are the villains this time? Jamie Foxx is one of them. Uh, he's, he's Electro. Yeah, he's the, he's meant to be the big bad. I don't know, because I don't, I don't really know the comics. I don't really know who the other... They're all kind of a bit more obscure than... Yeah, they're not like the main ones, like Doctor Octopus and all that, that no. were in the Tobey Maguire ones. But they're still, they're still fairly well known from the comics. Well, from what I remember from when I was a young comic book geek. Um, yeah. Do you know what? We'll need to do a um, a comic book superhero special or something. Or get get Stuart on. I know he's he's well into them, isn't he? One of our yeah, writers. he loves it. He, yeah, he's the guy. That's why we offload all the uh, outsource all the uh, comic book mu- uh, movie reviews to him. It always gets a bit of controversy out of him as well. So. Did, did that's you a, see, that's a plus. Uh, speaking of uh, comic book uh, news, I suppose this is the best place to put it, did you see the casting for the second Man of Steel? Or, or the second Superman movie, whatever you yes, call it. That, that yes, that is mental. Yes. Jesse Eisenberg. That, that is Luther. Nobody's seen that coming. Crazy talk. That's surely someone trolling the internet. I, I think he could be really good. <laughs> I, I know, I like Jesse Eisenberg. I think he's, I think he's good. I enjoyed him in uh, The Social Network and the magic one. Now you see me. Yeah. But as Lex Luthor? Yeah, nah. I just don't see him as Lex Luthor, yeah. I don't no know. chance. I don't know, shave his head, I put a ball cap on him. I don't know, maybe I, I could see him. I, I, think, I think he's got the, the right kind of attitude that would... Uh, I mean, I imagine a cross between the, the two that you mentioned, he's Mark Zuckerberg and... Uh, I don't even know the character's name from... The, co- the cocky magician type? Yeah, yeah. Um, put the two of them together and... Yeah, and that's what you're going to get. I mean, they're going to make him a sort of spoiled little rich kid, aren't they? Yeah. Hi. I can, I can see that. I think it'd be quite good. The other one was... Was it Jeremy Irons? Yeah, he's going to be um, Alfred. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I like that. It's off. Well, yeah, I like that much more than the Jesse Eisenberg casting. I don't know. See, I always pictured Alfred as like a... a bit of a stumpy guy, you know? <laughs> I can't really see a... Uh, a fairly handsome, but old-looking guy. Uh, quite tall and slim and all that, being a butler. I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't fit for me. <laughs> He's more than just a butler. Well, Alfred, nah, he's not really. He's a, yeah. a handler, a chauffeur. Mm. Oh, he's not going to have a big role in it, is he really? I mean, just nah, pop maybe pop. just publicity sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that sounds going to be weird. Well, it's going to be interesting because, I mean, you've got Ben Affleck as Batman, which kind of caused a big star, and now you've got Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how if it all pays off, how it all kind of turns out, because all the casting, I think, is a bit. It wouldn't have been, I don't think, who most people would have chosen. Do you remember, though, I, 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 we're going back a few years here, I don't remember if you remember when Heath Ledger was first cast as a Joker. Everyone was... An yeah, I don't like that one. Oh, can't believe they're putting Heath Ledger as a Joker. What, what a misplaced casting that is. Um, no, yeah. I'm, I'm, I quite like the casting so far. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be um, the fella from Man of Steel that's staying as Superman, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I believe so. That, that guy's absolutely ripped. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a good looking guy. When I uh, that that was one of the points where uh, I I remember when I was at the cinema watching it, and he, there's I think there's a point near the start of the film when he if, he's in the water in the sea or something, and he comes out and he's not got his top on, you know, and it, it, it's only that scene is only there for one purpose, you know, to show him completely ripped. A little and, bit gratuitous. And, and all the women in the cinema, you could just feel this this huge gush. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you might be Keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what other news stories do we have? Uh, well, that was going to be my, the first kind of big one. Oh, just staying on the Super Bowl, I think there's 24. I think there's a trailer for the new Oh, yeah, yeah, my friend well. told me about that last That's night. That's going to be on as well, so that'll be interesting to see. Uh, news, yeah, the first the kind of major big one I was going to say was uh, Jesse Eisenberg, going to be Lex Luthor. Um, kind of TV wise, I don't know if you guys watch any of the shows, Bones. And Banshee and Haven have all been renewed for new seasons. So Bones oh. is getting a 10th. Haven, I think, 
five, maybe four or five. And Banshee, I think, season three, because David, you watch. Yeah, well, Banshee. You were watching Banshee, Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed season one. Um, and I've started watching season two. I'm not up to date. I think I've caught two out of the four, maybe, episodes so far. And, it, it, you know, it's picked up where it um, finished last season. It, it You know, it's never going to win any awards. It's never going to be a great show. But, it, it you know, it's it's more than fulfilling. You know, it does, does a good job. Yeah, I must admit, I've seen the the first episode and with the the bit with the HP bottle or bot sauce ball, the, the way that guy that still yeah. sticks with me now, it's great. So I, I do mean to catch up on it. Honestly, I've never really watched more than one. And uh, Sean Saves the World, the NBC comedy, has been cancelled as well. Mm. I don't know, were you guys watching it or is it not really? Absolutely not. No. Didn't even realise it had aired. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I, I think I watched the pilot. I'm I don't know, I'm sure it was terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's been pretty terrible. Yeah, so that they've been that's been cancelled. So, but I think we're now starting to get into where a lot more shows will be finding out whether they've been renewed or cancelled. So we hit kind of towards me, which kind of seamlessly takes on to the other thing I was going to talk about, which is kind of small news, but I thought it might be a bit more of a discussion type thing. Um, obviously we're now in pilot season, so a lot of pilots are getting kind of put together for the networks to pick up for next season. Maybe you guys saw that Sharon Stone. Is going to be on a TV pilot for some network. I think it's TNT. All right. Yeah. Playing the, the vice president, so it's quite a big thing because she's a movie star. Yeah. And it um, just got me kind of thinking about kind of other movie stars at the moment. It seems to be quite a few. Like you talk about True Detective, you've got Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson, and that. Um, Josh Hartnett's in a new Showtime show, Penny Dreadful, which is like Frankenstein and Dracula and all that kind of in the same kind of living in London, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Altogether. Was that was that not the show that originally got picked up? last year two years ago and then it aired for one episode and then got picked up again or something i'm not sure Could i'm be. sure that i'm sure that's been going on the go now for a couple of years i think it got cancelled and rewritten didn't it and they oh, had to film everything yeah. again something along right. those lines um hallie berry as well she's in a new show over the summer with cbs where she's an astronaut who comes back and she's pregnant with a bait with an alien and her son's her husband's made a robot son it all sounds <laughs> bizarre um so i don't know what you guys think about like movie stars kind of making the move to tv what you kind of think i think it's a lot more acceptable now i don't think it's it's seen much as a fall from grace as it perhaps is in the past yeah you know if if, if, i think previously if an actor or an actress couldn't make it in the film industry it was seen as going to tv was a sort of lesser lesser role but in recent years i i almost it's almost the opposite obviously it's not you don't have the same um, monetary values that you do in the film but in terms of exposure I think I don't think there's an issue now with I think there's a lot more film stars moving into TV and I, th- and I think it's a good thing mm-hmm. yeah. I suppose the monetary wise it's supposed to be a bit more regular if it's a TV absolutely more security also, yeah 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 definitely I think it I think it's good that they're like you say more and more are coming across and yeah. I think it was, so. uh, it was Steve Buscemi that kind of kicked it off with World War Empire wasn't it That's that was really the, right. the first like massive one where he was committed to to more than one season. Yeah, I, th- I think they, I think straight off they ordered two seasons of Boardwalk, didn't they? Yeah, or he he was committed to two at least. I'm not sure, but obviously that had was Scorsese that uh, done the, the pilot, pilot for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that that's something you see as well. You see a lot more directors doing uh, a lot about TV work as well, whether it's yeah. uh, production or di- uh, like directing the pilot or being the like a lead showrunner. Obviously, it was a uh, uh, the guy who done Walking Dead the first season. Darabont. Frank Darabont, yeah. Um, obviously, he done he done pretty well with that, and he was really involved in it for the first year, and then got sacked. I think the show has been downhill since then, so obviously he was pretty committed to that. That's made a noticeable difference. I mean, talk, talking of Walking Dead, you've got Andrew Lincoln there. He came off a massive film career in Love Actually to do The Walking Dead. <laughs> Aye. Yeah. Definitely, right. Um, you, you mentioned Liam about the uh, pilot season. I saw, I think it was yesterday, that David Swimmers um, signed up for something or other. Oh yeah, he's, yeah. He's on a new ABC comedy. Can't remember. Yeah, he signed up for yeah a new comedy. Can't remember what it's about. I'm, I'm not sure what he's been doing for the last few years. Um, he's been Madagascar. He's been too busy being a giraffe. He was in uh, the Ice Man with the other right. from Boardwalk Empire. Michael Shannon. Yeah, Michael Shannon. Yeah. And he had a, a glorious moustache and that. That's right, actually. I, I, I did not remember. <laughs> it wasn't a great film. No, I was really disappointed. I, th- I thought it was. I thought it had potential to be brilliant. But no, I, I don't. I don't think there was any more um, 
certainly more no more news items uh, for myself. I, I was a bit disappointed, Liam, that in your news roundup there, you didn't mention the one news item that I got really excited by this year when I saw you tweet it out, which was Frozen coming back as a musical sing-along. Oh, well, you know, well, I'm also very excited about that, David. Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm, I'm, being, I'm, <laughs> just, I'm actually being deadly serious. I really, really enjoyed Frozen more than oh, I, I, I should have. Yeah, and, me too. And, you know, I have no shame in admitting that I I may or may not have the soundtrack. <laughs> so, um, do you know what? I, I don't, I'm i going to have to drag somebody along to that. I, I can't be seen going to that one by myself. Oh, you mean right. like a musical show? I thought you meant like a, like a karaoke DVD or cinema. Well, yeah, well yeah, sort yeah, of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're re-releasing like it in the words cinema. Words oh, right, okay, words right. at the bottom, yeah. I'm sure they're doing a Broadway show of it as well. Excellent news. I'm sure they are. But the yeah, more, no, the more frozen, the better. Exactly. Well, if you struggle to find anyone, David, I'll come with you. Okay. I, I, I think it's... Uh, I just have this great idea of uh, the whole cinema bursting in the song. I think it's... Uh, <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Yeah, that would be amazing. See, that, that's a thing that you don't really get from Disney now. And that you kind of miss it. That, that's, that used to be all that Disney done was like... Jungle uh, Book. Yeah, like musical uh, sing-along movies. Um, when I was a kid, it was it was always that. Like Hakuna Matata and like you said, the Jungle Book, all the, all the songs and that. Uh, What's your favourite Disney number, Stu? And um, oh, probably Probably Bear Necessities. From Jungle Book, that's top. It, that is a very good tune. That, that's, the, that's the one you always think about, isn't it? That could be a contender for opening in the podcast. Oh, oh, oh you've yeah. put it in a position now. Oh, good choice. Last well, will obviously know what it is, but uh, this will explain the explain yeah. the tough decision. I might just mash the two of them up. Just uh, that and I can't, I can't remember now. I right, decided the balance essays from now. Prepare for a Disney lawsuit coming our way. <laughs> Oh, it's a Pretty Little Liars theme tune, is that what you Oh, yeah, so it was. So it was. Oh, yeah, that was a competition. I have to say, Matt, I think my favourite Disney, I, I, I'm I torn between um, the other Jungle Book classic, which is I Want to Be Like You. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is, is that the yeah. name of the song? It yeah. Is, isn't it? And uh, the one from Snow White, Hi Ho. Meh. Mm, yeah. Oh, no. no I'm not What's wrong with that? that? Snow White's a great film, but nah, I don't like that. that the dwarf tunes. What have you got against the wharfs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing. I'm not, I'm not even going to give you another answer. It has to be a whole new world from Aladdin, I think, probably for me. Ah, oh, that's a great show as well. Classic. Does that have a song in that, doesn't it? In Aladdin? Oh yeah, uh, Friend Like Me. Yeah, it's another, right. good, another good song. I've been reliably informed there's one or two catchy numbers on the Frozen soundtrack. So, so I hear. Um, <laughs> there's one that... It, was one of them not like, top of the iTunes charts for two weeks or something? That let it go. I think let it go is done really. Oh yeah, Demi Lovato covered that. I think, or or she did the. She she doesn't do the song in the film, but I think she's the. I don't know. Maybe she wrote it. It was her version anyway that was released. I see. The other news story that I wanted to mention was, I just seen the From Dust Till Dawn trailer today. Oh yeah. The TV series that they're doing, uh, based on I take it the Quentin Tarantino movie. Yep. That looks superb. Who's starring in that? Uh, see, it was nobody that I really knew. There was a couple of faces I kind of recognised, but nobody I knew by name. What what uh, what channels picked that up, Stu? It's really in a really obscure... Yeah, way. it was one that I never heard of. Uh, I, I think it's El Rey, the network. I think you might be right. Something like that. It's really obscure. I'd never heard of it before. Yeah, El Rey is right enough. Not one that I've heard of before. I don't know what other they do. Yeah, Madison Davenport was the one of the faces that I recognised. Um, she has been in. I don't. I don't even know what I know her from. <laughs> oh, Shameless, the, the American Shameless. She was in. Uh, she was Ethel in that. Ethel. That's a great name. Uh, <laughs> it's a very, very hellbilly name, isn't it? Not to offend any Ethels out there. But yeah, I know her face from from somewhere, and apparently Don Johnson's in it. I didn't see him in the trailer though. Uh, from Miami Vice back in the day. All right. But no, that, that trailer looks really great. It looks very very cinematic, very... Yeah, quite fancy that. I'll, I'll put that in the link dump and you can all have a look at it. Well, it's in the it's one of our news stories on the website, so you can link it to the website. Oh, yeah, I will do. I'll link that in as well. Um, am I really thinking... It's, I know we're going back to the first news item here. Um, you were talking about um, trailers for the Super Bowl tonight. 
Jon Snow, played by Kit Harrington. Yes. He's in a film, uh, the Volcano one, Pompeii. Pompeii. I believe that's being shown tonight as well. All right. Uh, which should be a good one. I remember seeing a teaser trailer for that um, a couple of months back, and it looked pretty good. Is that another? Is that not another one with loads of gratuitous shots of him being ripped? Absolutely, yeah. For what I can remember of the trailer, it's not a bad thing. Uh, and that was it for news, anyway. That was that was pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Um, okay, so you had a, a topic you wanted to discuss about the movie *Stewart*. Yes, this is one that I want to open up to you that I experienced recently myself. It was just a sort of general discussion regarding cinema etiquette, uh, annoyances, habits, that sort of thing, which sort of sprung to my mind recently, um, because in the in the UK we have a, are we allowed to mention brand names? Stuart? Yeah, let's go for it, we're, we're not a BBC, we don't. The, the biggest uh, UK cinema chain is, is called Cineworld in the UK, and they're dotted about everywhere, and they've recently made the decision, get this, that you'll, you'll be appalled if you don't know it already, they have ditched Ben and Jerry's ice cream what and that's, they've that's they've transferred them for Baskin Robbins oh god really yeah well I, I've never tried any Baskin Robbins I was so horrified that I didn't want to uh, I had a quick look at the flavours and they had all sorts of crazy flavours going on there uh, and it, you know it just kind of it started off a, a cinema trip to something uh, that you know that just got worse it was one of those sort of trips from hell you know with loud people all around you people on their phones not getting the seat you want the, the, the whole thing and I just wanted to kind of open it up to, to see if you had any sort of general um, opinions on, on cinema trips well there's one uh, right off the bat I take it you're an ice cream man then. You don't. You're not popcorn crisps. No, no, nothing noisy. No, see, I don't. I'm a proper snob. I don't eat anything at the, at the movies. I it puts me off. Um, what, what, what if you're hungry? I'll have something before I go out. See, I don't. I don't really make a day of it. I'll, I, I like that suit. Some forward plan in there. Yeah, I'll uh, just go to the movies and then go home again. Do you never? Ju- do you never just wing it? Do you, never, do you never just sort of you know leave the house and oh I'll see how I feel? Yeah, sometimes. Even then, I'm I'm never hungry enough that I have to that I just have to eat something right there. <laughs> yeah. Speaking speaking of food in the cinema, I've got to tell you this one. Uh, for years and years, I have been sneaking sweets into the cinema to only find out that Cineworld allow you to just to take them in. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> for years, I have been. Get put, you know, putting sweets, putting them in my girlfriend's bag, you know, hiding all sorts of stuff. I didn't even realise you could just walk in with them. <laughs> and you feel so good about it, don't you? Yeah. You feel as if you've been like a ninja with your, your secret sweeties in your bag. <laughs> I mean, did that used to be a rule in cinemas? I think it did uh, back yeah, in the day. I'm sure it did. Certainly yeah. the, the old Odeon. Um, used to... So, yeah, that that's the thing I uh, don't like as well. As... Do you have a preferred seat? Uh, yes. It, it where, depends where, where, where do you go. See, at last couple of years I've just started going on my own. I prefer it on my own because there's nobody at risk of talking to you. And I like to see the trailers and everything. Yeah. You sound so anti-social, Stu. Well, at the cinema, it's not it's not a social thing. After the cinema is a social thing. Before the cinema is a social thing. Not in the cinema. I, I like my trailers. I, I have to agree with you, Stu. I, it's one of the... the the kind of um, what's the word like a social um, a, neg- a social stigma so oh right, yeah yeah is that right uh, to go on your own it's almost like a social stigma that you can't go to the cinema by yourself and it's just utterly ridiculous um, you know I go to this like used to I go to the cinema quite a lot by myself you know you're you're going to watch a film you're not there to to go into the cinema and chat to lots of people um, I understand that some people make a day of it or a night of it and do a whole bunch of other things as you say that's fine that is a social experience, but the cinema itself, I don't think, I know some people who would really turn up their nose at the idea of going by themselves, and it's just it's just ludicrous. You'd, you'd happily watch a film at, you know, at home by yourself. I don't see why you wouldn't do it at the cinema. Have you ever done it, Liam? Uh, I've done it once. I think it, I think it would depend on the film, though, yeah. I don't think I'd go to, like, Frozen or something on my own, because then you just get really weird. No, yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that either. No. But yeah, certain films, like... When my go see, yeah, like I don't know, Twelve Years a Slave or something. I'd be fine going that on my own, but yeah, not something like Despicable Me or Frozen or something. I think mm-hmm. I'd have to go with someone. Not necessarily. I'd have to take a kid, but I'd just have to go with someone. Try to think what other what other kind of ones that I do. Do you 
just annoys, a bit an annoyance though for me is people that go on get on their are on their phone when they're in the cinema and because it's dark you can see that they're on their phone and because it's bright and I just I don't get it why would you go to the cinema I mean the cinemas aren't cheap nowadays why why would you pay and then be on your phone the whole time it just it really annoys me exactly that's my, that's my annoyance yeah that that's a good one as well um like you say why why pay all that money to go to the movies and then not watch it. Yeah. Who, I mean, if you don't who like are you phoning a texting that is that important that you can't wait for an hour and a half? Yeah, exactly. At what point is it acceptable to to get the phone out? I.e., I know some people, you know, they say it's right. You can do it all the way through the trailers, and then as soon as the film starts, it goes away. And some yeah. people are saying, you know, as soon as you get in there, put the phone away. Mm, I, I will still play with my iPad or listen to my music until the trailers start. The adverts is fine. Nobody really cares about adverts. Although, I'm sure the, the cinema chain care about adverts still when you watch them. But, uh, no, I would just listen to my listen to music or podcasts or whatever until the trailers start. And that's the bits I want to see. And I think other people want to see those as well. Is that, is that the part where they sort of dim the lights further? There's like three different levels of dim, isn't there? Um, Do they not... When the, when the adverts start, they dim it. Then when the trailers start, they dim it further. And then when the film starts, they... It goes straight to, to darkness. Yes, I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, th- I think that's the point where you put the phone away, turn it off, don't don't even put it in silent because I've had the experience myself um, during American High School where the phone accidentally gets turned off silent and you start getting emails and texts and occasionally phone calls. And it's oh, like, no. boom, 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 boom. And it's just it's the worst because everyone hears it and everyone knows it's you. And then you, you don't want to do it. You don't want to go and turn it off because they'll know it's you, even though they already know. Yeah. Did you get a lot of tops? I did, yeah. Uh, I wee punch off my friend as well. She wasn't happy with that. Uh, the one time that I didn't, that I didn't go myself as well. Rookie mistake. <laughs> um, the, the only times I've ever done it at the film is um, is if I've, you know, if I need to check the train time or something. Or not, and not, and that's only just to check the time to see what it is you know so you know, I know whether to get the, the next train or something but even then I'm so conscious about it that I'll you know I'll put my jacket put hand on the screen or something yeah. The phone, yeah and then like just sort of like try and keek under it just to <laughs> to, to see what time it is there, there's quite there's quite a lot of things that annoy me at the cinema and it's uh, it, it's one of those places it really shouldn't you, you go there to have a good time and to enjoy a film and I, th- I think partly it's because some people are pretty rude and I think it's partly because I get quite anal about stuff like that. Sometimes it turns into a bit of a not pleasant experience. But I, I do enjoy my, my cinema uh, rituals. Um, and, and, and touching on that, I mean, do you get, I mean, I know Stu, you're a no food guy completely. Have you ever been tempted by the picking mix? Uh, when, I was, when I was a kid, yeah. And then you realise it costs like £14 for one of those jelly snakes and you yeah. still have well, well, you have to pay always, for it yourself you don't want it anymore the snakes are always a sign that it's going to be an expensive one <laughs> that, that, that's a really noob mistake going for uh, the snakes you want to go for those little uh, you know the little round chocolate things with hundreds of thousands on them oh no no they're rank yeah but they're, they're really light you get, good, <laughs> you get, good you get more for your money yeah. make it worth the value yeah. my favourite are the, the blue dolphins the blue gummy dolphins they are by far the best sweets. Yeah, they're not bad. Um, they've got a good sort of uh, weight weight to size ratio as well. You know, <laughs> do you only, do you only pick stuff that's light? <laughs> yeah, I, I I go along with my uh, with with a spreadsheet with all the calculations worked out. <laughs> you know, bonbons, nope. <laughs> Mini eggs, nope. I like those wee the wee fizzy bottles as well, the pink and blue ones. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah they're tasty. They're but they taste weird because they don't really taste like anything. They taste like shampoo. But they're, they're delicious. Mounting on a bottle of, bottle of head and shoulders. <laughs> not going back to hair again. We'll not talk about more <laughs> hairdressing and stuff. Uh, one, once was enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that, I mean, that was the only thing I, I kind of wanted to touch on regarding um, cinema annoyances. Unless you guys have anything else. Uh, yeah, just one more really thing I wanted to expand on that. Um, I have been hearing about these new types of cinemas that have been opening up across the world. Where... There's a lot, a lot for your seats and a lot for your screens, but you get a table and all that, and you can have your dinner in there. You can have like a full meal and just watch oh, a movie. Like luxury cinemas. Um, kinda, yeah. Um, uh, but it's like a more like a restaurant cinema hybrid. 
Um, and I was wondering if you guys thought that would work here. Is that something that would appeal to you guys? Yeah, I think there's one in Edinburgh that's like that. You have to pay quite a bit and you get... Like a I was just going to say that, Liam, yeah. Chance. I know there's some sort of luxury type cinema in Edinburgh where, you know, you really get looked after. There's only so many seats per screen and they're all really sort of comfy. Yeah, it's like uh, plush sofas and you get champagne and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's really, it makes me really good. So that, that's like a step above, even. But uh, I, I think that'd be a really cool idea. I would, I would use that more often, I think. Yeah. Oh, but then you've got your noise problem though, because people cutting plates and stuff like that. It's yeah, noisy, maybe, so. maybe. But no, it sounds good. I'd I'd be up for that. I'd yeah, I mean, go, going on from what I was saying about how annoyed, how easily annoyed I get at the simple things, um, such as the weight of picking mix and changing the ice cream, then I I would I would welcome a more luxurious experience. And you know what? I'd probably pay for it as well. You know, I I, I enjoy my film so much, and and I do enjoy the cinema experience when it's done well. So I, I would welcome a, um, an experience like that. And do you know what else I would welcome? So more cinema change to do the what, the cinema world do they do an unlimited card? I was going to say the exact same thing. Why did why does everywhere not offer that? Yeah. Apart, yeah apparently, it's not even a thing elsewhere in uh, Europe or America or anywhere like yeah. that. There's, there's to, very few places do it. That's to, to, yeah. I'm I'm going to cut in there and explain just to those uh, anyone listening who's who's not familiar with this. The cinema chain in the UK, Cineworld, they offer an unlimited card, which I think is fifteen or sixteen pound a month, and you can watch as many films as you want. You know, you can go, you know, five times a day. You can, you know, if you're a regular film goer, it's easy. You've saved your money within two trips. Um, I believe it now includes three D films. It's really, really good value, but it's the only chain that does it. Nobody else does it, and I cannot work out why. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know if they've got it's some crazy. kind of licensing over it or. Something like that, but I, nah, they can't do, it, can they? No, I wouldn't. That's just that's just an offer. I, I guess, really I guess like not. But like you say, you're you're saving your money uh, pretty much as soon as you buy it, and it's when you go, you notice that it's a lot busier than it was. Again, before Cine World kind of took over as the monopoly, the, the cinemas are always are packed. There's there's other benefits as well. I mean, I know you get invited to preview screenings. Um, and I know that you get, I think, 25% off food, which reduces a mm. £10 hot dog to 7 50 Yeah, makes it but, a little bit less if I run yeah. off. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it, it just seems, you know, it's such good value for money. And I'm sure they've, I mean, I'm sure the membership numbers must be huge for Cineworld. Yeah, I, like I, I say, you, you see people, a lot more people than you, than you used to uh, in the cinemas now. And it makes it worth the money, basically. And the the previous screens you mentioned, they're always full. Very rarely do you go in those empty seats there. I mean, if if any of our listeners um, around the world, if you know, if your country or if your own um, cinema chain in your state or whatever offers something similar, then get in touch and let us know about it. Be be, be keen to know if if it's quite unique. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, something I accidentally mentioned. Uh, secret screens. That was uh, now you see me last year. Uh, that was amazing. I, I loved right. that. Everyone just showed up not knowing what they were going to see, and I think that, that attitude is pretty cool. I really like that idea. Am I right in thinking it was absolutely packed, nearly every cinema for that? Yes, I believe it was, I Free sweets as well. The one time I have eaten in the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> when it was free. What did they give you? It was... It's Sour Patch Kids, the wee Sour Fruit Pastels. Mm, it's a bit of a cop out that, isn't it? Oh no, they're delicious. I love those things. It's 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 just one of those things that is it's so frustrating. I mean, I know. I mean, the the new nearest cinema to me is um, about oh, I think it's about ten miles away or something. So I have to get the train there, and it's a cine world, which is fine. They're building a a different chain of cinema in my hometown, about two minutes walk from me. Oh god! But because they won't offer the unlimited any sort of unlimited offer. Yeah, the chances are, chances are, are them, yeah. Ah, that sucks. And I wonder if that's if the inflated numbers from Cineworld are making uh, more of the other chains try and build more cinemas. If they think, oh yeah, we can we can capitalise on this, with more people going, you know. I mean, in the UK, I mean, I think there's only three chains now. Actual chains, is there not? I mean, you got Cineworld, uh, View, and Odeon. Am I thinking the rest are just independents? Mm, I think they've got Showcase down in... Oh, Showcase, yeah, that's right, Showcase. Apologies to those guys. 
I know when, uh, when me and Stuart were waiting to get the train back from London, we went round uh, kind of West End where all the cinemas are. And it's really weird down there because they're all separate. They only have like one screen each, and there's about 17 of them in a row, uh, all different ones. That's right. Did you did you not um, did you not have to kill time in London overnight? Yes, we did. We, we were exp- uh, we were planning to go and see you a bit of time, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had to wait until so, four in the morning or something. What do you do in London from sort of nine pm to four am? Well, we had expected to just sit in the train station and go for a snooze, just take shifts, and uh, then the train station closed <laughs> and kicked us out. <laughs> that that was <laughs> that was not fun. <laughs> So what did you do? Did you walk the streets of London? Yeah, for most of the time, yeah. We were considering, uh, strongly considering, getting into a strip club because it was open all night, uh, just until the train station opened back <laughs> up again. That was not good. So, uh, no no early morning train journeys for me anymore. I, I, I remember you, you telling me that you were doing the all night thing and I just thought, that's crazy. There's no way I could do that. It, it would have been fine if we could have stayed in the train station because there were seats and all that and the were kind of travellers lounge and... I'd have been fine just listening to music or whatever and then going to sleep for an hour and then just swapping, you know? Yeah, that never happened. Other than that, that was a great trip though. Yeah, I mean, that was, I suppose we didn't mention it at the start, um, the trip that we're referencing to that, that was when we went to London Film and Comic Con last summer. And for those of you interested, anyone sort of based in the North East, we will be in Newcastle on the 8th and 9th of March for Newcastle Filming Comic Com, so come and see us there. Good plug. And uh, well, what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll put the link to the Newcastle Filming Comic Con, just for anyone in the area that wants to buy tickets or anything like that, because um, we want the place to be packed, obviously, get a good turnout for it. Yeah. Uh, just obviously because it's the first one, um, anything we can do to help them get a few more numbers in. Absolutely, and we're giving away free stuff. Oh, of course, yeah. Free stuff was great last year. Got more Pokemon cards this year, no? Is that what you guys gave? Is that what we gave away last year? Well, we gave away a lot of things. I mean, do you know, I, I think we started off, we were giving away lots of free stuff, and I think the sweets went away first. We had like little bags of Haribo, and we had nice. little, you know, fun size Snickers and things like that, wasn't there? Marshmallows. Did we not have to get the sweets to replace the toys that we gave away? Yeah, because there was the. Because we started off with a mixture of sort of toys and sweets, and I think some of the more popular sweets went first. And then the toys went, um, and we originally had um, all these packs of Pokemon cards with the idea that people that came over they'd get one card each for free, and I believe someone just took the packet. Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Bastards. You know, because I think we had, you know, wait, the packet hadn't been opened yet or something like that, and someone just thought that there was a whole packet that was free. <laughs> yeah. That was our mistake then. <laughs> yeah. So. There was uh, yeah we give away, we give away a lot of those um, little monster in my pockets and mini bogglins. Um There was bouncy balls. Um, we, we might try and upgrade the 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 free stuff this year. You know don't don't, don't be put off by bouncy balls and. See, but yeah, people love them. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the the event organisers love them right enough, but <laughs> yeah, the fans love them. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was good. Oh. All right. Um, so thanks very much, guys, for listening. Thanks to David and Liam for joining us. You're very welcome. Remember, give us a wee like on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash TV and Film Review. Twitter, twitter.com forward slash TV and Film Review, or at TV and Film Review. You can get us on Google Plus at uh, whatever the Google Plus website is, plus uh, TV and Film Review. Uh, YouTube slash TV and Film Reviews, which we're still kind of working on. You can search us on iTunes to get this podcast uh, to download, which you've probably already done now that I think of it. If you just search TVFR, and you can download the high quality MP3 on Bandcamp at tvandfilmreview.bandcamp.com, and you can let us know. Um, we'll, we'll probably do a little. Uh, can I ask me anything? I'll uh, use a submitted questions on Twitter and Facebook. Absolutely. Uh, for next week's podcast. If you want, if you want to get in touch with us, you can can do uh, throughout the week. Stu gave all the uh, various links to Facebook and Twitter. Our email addresses are on the website as well. Just ask us any questions and we'll answer them for you next week on the podcast. Yep. Uh, So, thanks again for listening and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.